Want to make a podcast? Spotify's got a platform that lets you make one super easily, then distribute it anywhere and everywhere. You can even earn money all in one place for free. It's called Spotify for Podcasters, and here's how it works. Spotify for Podcasters lets you record and edit podcasts right from your phone or computer, so no matter what your setup is like, you can start creating today. Then you can go ahead and distribute your podcast to Spotify and anywhere else podcasts are heard. Video podcasts are also available on Spotify. And when you want to take the conversation with your fans to the next level, Q&A polls are the best way to get them talking. With Spotify for Podcasters, you can earn money in a variety of ways, including ads and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, it's totally free with no catch. We've been using Spotify for Podcasters and we highly recommend you give it a try. Download Spotify for Podcasters app or go to www.spotify.com slash podcasters and get started. Everybody, welcome back to That's So Fringy Podcast. We're so glad that you made it back and found us once again. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about some things that might trigger people a little bit, uh, we hope. Um, but it's dark Disney and a little bit of Hollywood symbolism with eyes on the right. And if you haven't seen her Instagram, uh, you guys need to check her out. Babe, what's her Instagram handle? I think you're using eyes on the right 4.0. Yes. Yes. That's it. Yeah. That's so we've got team. eyes on the right here. Amy is her name, and we're going to be chatting with her, and she's going to be um, laying down a large amount of wisdom on us from years of uh, research and lots yeah. of time spent really digging into these subjects because you know people need to know this stuff. We are um, we're hoping that you're going to learn some things today that um, help you to see. Um, these, the symbolism and these things that they're putting right in front of our face all the time. So with that, we're going to introduce Amy to you. Eyes on the right. Amy, how are you today? I'm excited. I'm good. Yes. Thanks for having me, you guys. This is awesome. Oh, of course. Yeah, we're so glad to have you. And we just wanted to start off by getting to know you a little bit. You know, what started you on this journey, kind of your red pill moment, as we call it. Um, what What is it that really opened your eyes to this? Oh, my goodness. Well, thank you for having me again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm really humbled to be here with you guys. And, um, you know, what really set me on this journey, I'd have to say it was around... 2016, 17, um, I had just gotten back from some ministry trips to Haiti. And this was a time when kind of the WikiLeaks stuff was coming out. I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys remember all that, mm -hmm. but like, oh, yeah. you know, having to do with the Clintons and all that. And um, mm -hmm. I had this memory of some of these conversations that I had with some of the people in Haiti and it came rushing back to me. And I was like, oh my gosh, everything they're talking about is true because they were mm. telling me about, you know, some of the stuff going on with the children. I don't know if I can say that. Mm -hmm. Oh, you can say whatever mm -hmm. you okay. want to say. So they were talking about the child trafficking and I didn't pay mm -hmm. much attention to it when I was there, but fast forward to the WikiLeaks, it kind of just spurred my memory and thus ensued kind of this just digging into all this stuff. And that was around the time when kind of like Trump was in office and there was all the Q stuff and mm -hmm. sure. that kind of like um, detective work just has always been of interest to me just to like research and piece things together. And so, yeah, I think that's pretty much where it started for me. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's very similar for, um, for the girls too, because, yeah. um, they, you know, they started waking up to a lot of this stuff when you, when you, you know, hear it explained in the way that you explain it or, or others do, um, you really begin to, um, have to stop and question 
what it is that you believe and why you believe it. And I always tell people, you know, everything you know about the world is coming from that black box on your wall. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, if you, if you've never been to Switzerland, the only thing you know about Switzerland is maybe a documentary or what you've read in a book, you know, so we're being completely fed information all the time through this device. And, uh, you know, how do we really know what's true and what's not true unless we do our own research? And That's so uh, we're so thankful that you have done that research. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to start with some of the uh, Hollywood symbolism that yeah. um, you've found throughout the years, things that um, might make people think, uh, wait a minute, what was that? What was that that I just saw? What was that hand symbol that guy just threw mm -hmm. up? You know, those type of <laughs> right. things. Yeah. Well, um, you know, I have to go back a little bit because tying into the child trafficking stuff, thus ensued this symbolism kind of idea of the symbols they used within that area, right? Like yeah. child trafficking and like the mm -hmm. pedo symbols and stuff. Yeah. So I yeah. started to see how it it linked back to Hollywood. And mm -hmm. at the time I was living in Southern California. I grew up in Southern California. Um, and so I was really close to LA and, you know, when you're in that area, you just see actors, you, you see Hollywood mm -hmm. like filming. It's just, and so with that kind of mindset and knowing people in the business, it kind of like, I'd have these like flashbacks of conversations and little things that people would say. And so taking all this together, jumping into this kind of discovery and adventure of this symbolism stuff, I was just like, oh my gosh, like this is all tied together. Like this pedo stuff goes to Hollywood, goes to this, you know, the political realm, goes to mm -hmm. the royals, and you just can't pull them apart because they're so interwoven. Yes. Um, and so I just kind of started with just researching like secret societies, um, Freemasonry, and then that led me back to um, Egyptian um, pagan religions. And I have a, I'm a Christian, and so it started to tie in the Bible and I'm like, Whoa, wait a second, God, my mind is blown here because all of this stuff is all goes back to the word. And so, um, I know that's a lot of information, but like, I felt like that's kind of my starting point and, you know, seeing how the symbolism has been derived from these ancient pagan religions and how it's permeated into our society today through these secret societies. It's like, it's just mind blowing. And that's how they communicate. They communicate mm -hmm. with symbols, with numbers, with colors. And so I just started to try to peel back the layers as best as I could. Yeah. So what are some of the, uh, and, and for, for those that haven't looked at it, what are some of those pedophile symbols? Cause I know that yeah. the FBI has a whole yeah. uh, treasure trove of all of these symbols. And so could you explain to the audience, I know this is a podcast and it's hard to see visually. We're going to try to leave some links in the uh, yeah. show notes so that you guys can see these things that we're describing. But um, yeah. Isaac, if you wouldn't mind just showing us uh, or showing us, telling us what these symbols look like. Yeah, absolutely. So you're right. You're absolutely right. The FBI came out with these symbols um, that, pedophiles use to communicate their preferences to one another. And the triangle within a triangle is the, um, the boy lover symbol. And then the heart within the heart is, um, is the girl lover symbol. And then you have the butterfly, which is a child lover, but it all kind of comes from the triangle and the heart. And you'll see this, mm. you'll see this even in, um, there's an ice cream logo, that I, yes. I can't think of the name. Do you guys know what it is? Like good it's, life or it's, yeah. I feel like it's maybe a Hispanic, like a yeah. gamash or oh I don't know, but I know yeah. it's red. I know exactly yes. what you're talking about. Yes. And it has the hearts. And so you start to like see these symbols everywhere. But the irony in that is it's always like on kids stuff, mm -hmm. like kids toys, kids diapers at Disneyland, um, mm -hmm. on the, um, it's a small world ride. You've got the triangles all throughout there. Mm -hmm. And so it's just like, whoa, wait a second. There's something more going on here. And these people are communicating a message to those in the know. So, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a weird message to communicate, isn't it? Right. Y yeah. Like why the kids? 
know. I mean, why why is it all over the kids' stuff? I mean, I've seen like beach towels mm -hmm. and kid t-shirts with the symbols on them. It's like, yeah. why yeah. are you after our kids? I mean, I know why, but you know, yeah. it's just, it's, it's sad. It's Super really hard sad. to articulate how a person would be, you know, this way, but people are, we yeah. know that we know people are, uh, attracted to children. And, and for that reason, um, we know that they have a lot of underground stuff that they're doing uh, where they're, you know, hiding it. And that's why you would need a symbol. You know, if mm -hmm. you're, I mean, in Jesus's time, the, the fish was mm -hmm. the symbol for the, for the, uh, or I'm sorry, after Jesus, the disciples and, and the, the followers of the way used the fish as a symbol of their meeting places. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this is where we're going to be at. And so it, it makes sense. This symbolism is continuing on and that you would need that in order to keep it secret. So the triangle uh, within the triangle, the heart inside the heart, you've mm -hmm. seen these. I know that uh, our listeners have seen these. They just don't know it yet. And yeah. once they see them, they'll, they won't be able to unsee them. But what are some other symbols that you have? Um, well, you mean in regards to like the children and that aspect or just overall? Just overall is fine. Yeah. 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 So, um, you know, going back to kind of like biblical times and even like Egypt, right? You see the hieroglyphs on the walls, mm -hmm. like this, this way of communicating in essence is, is pretty smart because mm -hmm. it'd be like you're in the club and like nobody else knows what you're saying. And you're like able to communicate this message and be hidden in that. And mm -hmm. so I, I mean, to some extent, it's like, okay, I can see why they would use symbols and numbers and colors to um, try to communicate a, a hidden message, if you will. But um, gosh, there's so many. I mean, mm -hmm. um, I actually just did a podcast on this and I just was like, I don't even know where to start. I mean, if you start yeah. with some of the basics, like the um, Freemasonry symbols, um, mm -hmm. the triangles mm -hmm. and... Um, you know, the square and compass and the pillars that are involved with that. Then you yes. get into the checkered and the black and white. And um, then you move into the symbolism, like you were mentioning, Rick, with the one eye and all of that. Um, that is really tied back to these um, ancient religions that um, of like Egypt, right? Babylonia, Mesopotamia, mm -hmm. because it's this eye of raw. Eye of Horus, um, right. all seeing eye. I mean, it's so like interwoven that um, it's hard to like kind of compartmentalize it because there's so much overlap in it. And I know mm -hmm. you girls probably really know this being kind of, you know, involved in this symbolism stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm sure you see it. And then once you kind of see some of these things, you see it everywhere. And it's everywhere. Right. Yep. It's just so mind blowing. And it's so, almost like in your face, yeah. like, like for the people that are awake and know what they're talking about, mm -hmm. they can still, they can still talk their secret language and what are we going to do about it is how I right. feel. And it's like, <sighs> makes well, and me... it seems like they're getting more and more blatant about it, right. more and more mm -hmm. obvious about it where yeah. it is right in front of our faces. I mean, the, the whole Hollywood symbolism with you know, the Grammys and all of that, it's just gotten to be like. Okay, I know what you guys are doing. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're you're absolutely right and you have to think, okay, well why are they doing it? And so mm -hmm. that's where it gets multifaceted. Um, you know, that's where mind control programming MK Ultra comes in. I don't know how much you guys mm -hmm. have talked about on the podcast. Um mm -hmm. And it also comes in this energy harnessing. Um and that's an important part of it too because what happens in these occult practices is, and maybe you're familiar with like the magic circle, they call it in like mm -hmm. witchcraft and Wicca. That's why these symbols are used to harness an energy in a focal point, if you will. And so whoever's in the center of that circle, or when you're making the triangle down, you're focusing or up, you're focusing the energy towards, it could be a chakra, it could be towards their mind, towards their third eye. Um, mm -hmm. and, and that's where it gets a little like, what in the world is going on? Um, but if you make it simple in the sense of there's, it's multifaceted, they're trying to convey a message to the people in the know. And if you look at it from a spiritual lens, they're trying to harness this energy and quote 
from something supernatural. Um, so it's, it's multi-layered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it gets really complex. I mean, it's even, (laughs) you know, you find yourself being a Christian where it's like, Mm -hmm. sometimes we say things or do things that if you weren't a Christian, you wouldn't understand, you know, you wouldn't know if you weren't a Catholic, this wouldn't mean anything to you, you know, making the cross on your forehead and, you know, across your chest, It, it wouldn't mean anything, but if you're a Catholic, then it does mean something. So it's kind of like the symbols aren't for the general public. They're for each other, for for the people in the club, basically. Yeah. Oh, so can you talk a, a little bit about like the kind of the numerology and the gematria side of things? Because I know that that plays a big part in numbers. Yeah. And how that how they communicate. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and so the numbers are interesting because, of course, we know biblically numbers are important. You know, you've mm-hmm. got specific numbers that like seven is the number of completion and three and 40 days and 40 nights. And so mm. it's always this perversion of what God intended for good. And I, I'd love to convey that to your audience because people are like, well, what's wrong with the owl or what's wrong with, you know, this number, or that number. It's not that it's wrong because God intended it for good. It's just what Satan has then taken and imitated and perverted. And so mm-hmm. I think that's important to understand in all of this because it's, mm-hmm. you've got to view it with that biblical lens and then it kind of starts to make more sense. But The numbers start out, they're important in the Bible. And then you see the occult come in or the fallen angel kind of knowledge passed on. And then they take this perversion of what God intended just to be something good and useful as a created thing, right? Um, And they elevate it to create some sort of of an energy, if you will. And Mm -hmm. so, um, again, it's all about this harvesting of an energy, and mm-hmm. it's the worshiping of the created over the creator. And mm-hmm. when you look at numbers specifically, you'll see numbers in the occult like three, six, nine is really important. That goes into the golden ratio, which of course God intended for good. And they take sure. it and kind of twist it around. Um, you see the numbers like nine and 11 because they represent symbols too. Mm-hmm. So that's where it gets, it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. But um, the gematria is really this assigning a number to a letter. And when you have a certain word and it comes up to, let's, let's give an example of pink and black. Okay. Pink and black, when you type this into the gematria calculator, comes out to the number 73. Well, there's other words associated with um, 73 that pop up as well. One of them happens to be sacrifice. And so when you start to see, oh, they're using numbers to communicate a message, to draw forth an energy, to, um, you know, tie in this whole theme of what their agenda and their plan is, you start to see like, okay, there's something more here. They're using these numbers um, to communicate something. Mm -hmm. And that's where it's it's confusing. So I, I also look at Gematria is you know, it is an occultic tool. And Mm -hmm. so as people who are using it to try to decode or understand certain things that the elite are doing, just remember that it is, it's like using a Ouija board to understand the Bible better. Like it doesn't, Mm -hmm. doesn't go flip flop, you know, like you use the Bible to understand the world, not the worldly stuff to understand godly things. And so, Mm -hmm we have to keep it all in in kind of context as we're like peeling back the layers on some of these more complicated things. But yeah, they use Gematria very often and pink and black is a really good one because Mm -hmm. um, they use those numbers too. Yeah. And I think it's really interesting when you talk about energy, because Mm -hmm. I don't think most people uh, understand how, much of energy beings that we are, you know, you start hearing things like aura and how people have all of this energy and immediately your mind goes to new age, which, which is, is how they're using it. So as you were saying, you know, God intended it for good, but the, these other new age doctrines are, are changing it. And so when you think about giving your energy, as you're saying, they, they do this in the way that we as Christians would worship God. So when we're standing in front of God and we're raising our hands in worship and we're giving our energy to this purpose, 
worshiping mm-hmm. God. It's the same in reverse or mirrored uh, to where you are then giving your allegiance or whatever it is, your worship to either that occultic symbol or mm-hmm. or to the devil himself. You know right, that. Right. So you got to make sure that as Christians we understand where our energy is going and that we do have this energy that and it and it it's very important when we talk about worshiping God and be careful where, what you're watching and be careful what you're looking at and be careful what you're giving your energy to because you are at times giving it to this um, occultist uh, religion and, and these these uh, dark magic practices. Yeah. No, you, you said it perfectly. I mean, it's so true. It's like um, you think about people are like, well, how can a symbol, how can this, you know, hold an energy or how can how can this have an importance to like, say I make a triangle, does it mean anything? No, Mm. it doesn't mean anything to you. But what does Hosea say? My people perish because of lack of knowledge, be as wise as a serpent and as innocent as a dove. And so I approach this in a way of like, listen, we can be sharp and discerning of our enemy. We're not going to go into battle, laissez-faire, unengaged, passive, and and, and just think we're going to make it out unscathed. And so- Mm -hmm. This kind of how I started my page and how God's refined me in it is like, it is unconventional. It's not your typical, let's share the gospel in a conventional way of, of Bible verses. It's it's more of exposing kind of the enemy and showing his tactics and schemes. So we're not naive to these things. We're not naive to the fact that these people are in, they are using these things to twist and pervert um you know, our minds and also mm-hmm. what God created, you know? Mm-hmm. So do you mind talking a little bit about like, you know, kind of what happens at like a, you know, a concert or like a music festival or something like that? Like, you know, we talked a little bit about giving your energy, like mm-hmm. astral world and some of that stuff that has, you know, these, these are big things that are happening there. And I don't think that people really understand what's going on. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, that's a spiritual battle. Yes. I mean, you look at Astro World, like you said, for example, you've got people walking in. Many, I'm sure, are not believers, so they don't have the blood of Christ over their lives. So they're just kind of willy nilly just walking into these places, just passive, right? Mm-hmm. And when we open ourselves up and we don't have the blood of Christ on us, um, we open our, our ear, eye, and you know, eye gates open to whatever the enemy wants to put into us. And so the Bible says, take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ, submit it, right? So if we're just allowing things to come in our mind and allowing things to come in our ears, then we're kind of like open vessels to whatever it is they want to push into us. Mm-hmm. And so when you start to study the occult symbolism and everything that goes along with that, and I, I say this, you know, always come to these things with the idea of, you know, the Holy Spirit's leading you and you're covered and you pray before you dive into some of these things because it's, it's deep, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And so, you know, when these people come to these concerts and they don't understand these deeper concepts of how the enemy can use them um, unknowingly because they are open to that, uh, it's scary. And Mm -hmm the vibration and the energy and the flashing lights, it all plays into our psyche and to our mind. Uh And this even ties into MK ultra and mind control, because those are some of the things that they use to hypnotize and to create Uh fractures in people's minds. Well, Um, and they realize through MK ultra that that stuff works. Exactly. it, It has the desired effect. So then they implement it on the general public. Right. It's like a mass experiment, an astral mm-hmm. world. It is. And so, okay, guys, let's ramp it up. Let's put out it, – it's like a mass mind control experiment. And mm-hmm. I actually think that's part of part of their process to kind of see how people react, see what the outcome will be. And it's no different than what they would do to a singular person in mind control, flashing lights, loud music, um, drugs, alcohol, Mm-hmm. You know, you have that no rhythmic protection. chanting that they rhythmic, do over and over. Exactly. And that's, you look into any sort of, um, any sort of like older cultures and stuff like that, that do voodoo or any sort of pagan religion. 
that's part of their religion. That's part of these incantations mm-hmm. and bringing in the spirits is the rhythmic and, you know, the music. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, it's all really interesting when you think about <laughs> concerts in that way. All of a sudden, you're like, I'm not sure if I want to go to a concert anymore. I know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But we, we have to discern, as we talked about in one of our last episodes, we have to be careful that, you know, it, it, you can't throw all media, all mm-hmm. music, everything out. You have to be in the world, but not of the world. And it's a very difficult to discern, but that's what the Holy Spirit's for. That's why when Jesus left, he gave a gift. He says, I'm sending you a gift, your mm-hmm. helper. And and this Holy Spirit is what we're supposed to be tapping into so that we can discern these things. And so I wanted to talk about Disney for a second, because you guys uh, just brought up Astro World, and it made me think the whole time about Fantasia. Oh, yeah. This trippy movie that yeah. I watched as a kid where I'm just like, what is going on? Our, what our is parents up with- wouldn't let us watch it. Yeah, when, yeah. Well, that's when probably we were- a good thing. <laughs> I saw it at a friend's house, and I think I mentioned it to my mom, and she was like, you watched Fantasia? And I was oh, like, like magic. Yeah. You know, yes. like – Casting yeah. spells. Yeah, I mean, and- you've got these pink elephants running around and yeah. doing all kinds. I mean, there's Super like a weird. whole acid trip, like yes. right in the middle of this thing. It's crazy. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, well, Fantasia is one of the main um, main tools. Well, Disney movies, a, a lot of Disney movies are um, tools used to implant mind control victims and to further deepen their programming. But Fantasia is a really big, big one. Um, a lot of survivors of mind control have talked about Fantasia as being one of them um, mm. because of that, because of the psychedelic type effect and the lights and the music and the sounds. Um, again, something God intended for good music, you know, worship mm. and Satan, of course, you know, takes that and, and infiltrates and imitates. So I, you know, this is a deep one, dark Disney. Yeah. I could, I could talk a lot about this because I mean, it all goes back to Walt, Right. Mm-hmm. I have this, I actually have this theory and tell me what you guys think. I mm-hmm. really believe at this point in my research that everybody that they, and I'm air quoting, mm-hmm. they propped up as good, like Walt Disney, um, are in fact actually fronts wolves in sheep's clothing. Um, mm-hmm. I actually think they're probably some of the worst because of this idea of presenting this front of goodness and wholesome fun and all this stuff for your kids and behind Mm. the scenes, there's really so much more at work here. And Walt Disney was a member of De Molay. He was a 33rd degree Freemason. Um, There were other stories that he, you know, really liked to kind of dabble in the pedophilia as well. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, a lot of the Disney movies were created for mind control program victims. And Mm -hmm. I know there's a lot Mm -hmm. of different directions I could go here, but, depending on kind of what you guys want to talk no, about. No, you just you just go where the Lord <laughs> uh, has you go. I think that uh, it's interesting that he uh, Walt Disney was really good friends with Werner von Braun, yep. um, you know, the head of NASA at one mm-hmm. point, and also a Nazi. Um, <laughs> Let's not forget yeah, that part. <laughs> a little bit of a Nazi there. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. You start to see it, and you start to make these connections, and, you know, and, and – the whole magic part of it. Like we just, Mm -hmm. you know, I, I stumbled upon this. um, Well, actually I just said it second Corinthians 10, three through five, it says anything that sets itself, any high imagination that sets itself Mm. up against the word of God. Right. But Mm. what is Disney and what are these people cartoons and stuff always tell our kids, use your imagination. It's Mm -hmm. almost like they're this incantation of like, open up your mind, kiddos. Let me just enter right in with whatever it is I want to, you know, um, brainwash you with essentially. Mm -hmm. And I find it so interesting, these little like, I call them kind of spells and incantations because words are so powerful and they call it the magic kingdom. And I'm like, they're just, it's just soft witchcraft. Yeah. (laughs) Mm -hmm. You know, it really is. It and is. the amount of kids that go missing uh, mm-hmm. from Disneyland over the years is staggering. I mean, it's it, the, the fact that people are still taking their children to Disneyland is crazy. Yeah. If you knew these numbers, you know, if you knew what what was actually happening, how these these children are just disappearing. And when you look into Disney and they've got these 
you know, these large underground tunnel systems that lead all over the place. And it, it, it's just this massive thing. And then, as you mentioned, he was a 33 degree Mason and, and they have the club 33, which you have right. to pay large amounts of money and be almost an elite to be able to even be in there. And, and so what are those guys doing right. uh, behind closed doors in club 33? It, it's all mm-hmm. just takes you down rabbit hole after rabbit hole after rabbit hole until you, I mean, I can think back to the first time I realized, and I don't mean to be phallic or weird in any way, but the first time you saw the uh, castle on the front of the Little Mermaid, um, Mm -hmm. and there's a giant phallic symbol right in the very middle of it. And you can, I mean, I'm sure some of the, most people already know this stuff because this came out a long time ago, but we've got, we've got phallic symbols. We've got, uh, and, and we know from, from, the Egyptian symbolism and stuff like that, 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 that's an obelisk. That's, right. that's the, the one of the pieces that they couldn't find. And I mean, if, if you guys look up this uh, Egyptian stuff and we might have to do an episode on that just to help people with some of this symbolism, but I mean, that's, that's an obelisk right there on the front of, of that. Uh, and even thing. just the underlying themes of a lot of the Disney movies of, a parent dying and you know, this trauma Trauma. that they're, you know, I still, the Lion King is like the, (laughs) one of the worst parts of of my childhood. I'm like, why would you do this to me, mom? Like this was awful. She was waking up screaming, Mufasa. I know. (laughs) It's so sad. Uh, But it's just that, that MK ultra trauma Mm -hmm. that they're putting into these movies that are like, Mm -hmm. when you see, when you see it, you see it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's really like you're so spot on. I mean, it really is like when you can see it for what it is and you see all these different kind of facets of what they're trying to do. I mean, you're right. The the natural mother and father, that's never there. Mm-hmm. One of the parents always dies. Like there's always like an – like think of Pinocchio. I mean, my gosh, that one was yeah. just – they take Insane. these little boys to this little boy island and, oh, you know. Treasure Island. Treasure Island, right? And they completely <laughs> change their DNA. It's, you start to think, oh my gosh, they've been showing us this whole time. And even mm-hmm. the old Mickey Mouse stuff, like their, their Freemason um, rituals shown in some of these old Mickey Mouse cartoons. And it's mm-hmm. like. Yeah, it's crazy. It's so crazy. Well, see. and they take all the aspects of the MK Ultra and mm-hmm. put it all into one hour and a half movie. They've got the lights, they've got the music. I mean, yeah. I don't even know how many times we were singing Let It Go after we watched Frozen because it was it's like so catchy. It's so, mm-hmm. you know, so you sing these songs over and over again. You put them on in the car for your kids. It's just like right. constant programming. Totally. Well, and you know what else is strange is See, like, even just in our conversation, I'll preface with this, you know, you start with symbolism and then it takes you to Egypt and then it takes you to Disney and it takes you to secret societies. I mean, it's so interwoven that you can't, that's why we're kind of all over the place when we talk about these things, because there's just so much overlap. But, um, you know, it's interesting too, with Hollywood is they're obsessed with Disney, Um, Mm -hmm. You see any of these Disney stars and you guys know, like they go from just squeaky clean to just over sexualized and totally out of their minds. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Almost every Hollywood person has a picture at Disney. They take their kids to Disney. It's almost like this really cultic type, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, it's almost like paying homage. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely is. And it's interesting when I lived in Southern California, I, I really thought my friends were more interested in going. They were more obsessed with going to Disney than their kids were. And so you see this like obsession with it. And I just feel Mm -hmm. like there's something more there. Mm -hmm. That I totally agree. Right? It's so weird how the adults become obsessed. And then it's Mm -hmm. like they all have matching shirts and they all go. It's it's really weird. I'm with you. Yep. It's a trip. Well, just the amount of money that their people are willing to spend to go stay at a Disney hotel and have the whole experience, and it's it's outrageous. I mean, yeah. it's a lot of money people are people are dropping. Yeah, and that's a good point too because going back to the multifaceted concept of why they do this, I mean, you've got MK Ultra, you've got conveying a message, energy, but you've also got mm-hmm. the money aspect, and so 
you know, the love of money is the root of all evil, right? And so yep. mm-hmm. this this money aspect of all of this stuff really drives them as well. We we can make money off these people, you know, type of thing. Yeah. We can get rich and and brainwash them and mind control them and create little robots and I mean, it was like when we looked up that Club 33, which for everybody out there, if you don't know what it is, you can find some information on it online. Yeah. But um, it's basically the so it's the only place in Dis- in the Disney parks where you can drink alcohol. It's mm-hmm. you can go in and it's like a you know restaurant slash bar, but you either have to be a member or you have to be invited by a member, right? Yeah. yeah. And it's like to be a member, it's like I think it's close to a hundred thousand dollars or something a year just just in dues to be able to go into it. And it's a hidden entrance in the park that everybody walks by. You've you've walked, been to Disneyland, you've walked by the entrance and you didn't even know it. It's right there hidden in plain sight, but it's, it's so much money to go in and to join it. And you have to be, you have to be invited. Yeah. No, you're right. And it just makes you wonder like, what are they doing? Um, you know, I've read some Reddit stories and also, um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Fiona Barnett. She was an SRA MK Ultra mm. survivor from Mm-mm. Australia. She has a free, I think it's free still PDF, but it's called Eyes Wide Open. And she wrote this book about her experiences. And one of them was at Disneyland, California. And they, it's just horrible. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's horrible to even like repeat, but after hours, they would take these young children who were being programmed for the system, the Illuminati, and they would put them on these rides on the teacups and they would, you know, torture them. They would do things to them to get them to fracture in their mind, to create mm-hmm. alter personalities. And um, some of her stories, I mean, she drew pictures um, as a child and some of these pictures of what she went through is just, it's just horrendous. And so when you mm. think about that and then you couple that with, Everybody running around happy, you know, spending $15 for a bottle of water. You're just like, Mm -hmm. what in the world? Like there's an energy there though. Have you guys ever Mm -hmm. been? Have you been to Disney? Okay. There's an energy there. And I never liked it. Growing up in SoCal, I never liked Disneyland. And now Mm -hmm. I can see why. But there's a heaviness there. There's like a – Yes. Right? Did you yes, feel that too? Big time. Especially yeah. on that It's a Small World ride. Mm. That ride itself, I was like, I, it was just weird. It was downright yeah. weird. And I just felt <laughs> yucky the whole time yes. being in that weird little cave. And mm-hmm. it just was, it was just odd. Yeah. And then it begs the question. So if these parents are going into this Club 33 and, you know, they're going in after hours, they're allowed to have alcohol, all of this stuff. So they're entertaining the parents, what are they, what they're really after is the children, right? So what are they doing with these kids after hours while the parents are enjoying their time in club Mm -hmm. 33? You know, it's, it's, it's hard to even think about, but this stuff is happening and people don't realize it. Absolutely. And there was even, um, I believe it was either an article, a journalist, um, it's probably been hidden on the internet now, just scrubbed, but, they would take some of the kids that were they were trafficking, and if they had a yellow dress, they would put the child in a yellow. Did you hear that? Yeah, yep. put the kid in the yellow dress, and then the the person who purchased that child, um, they would go up and say hi, daddy, and they take the dad's or the man's hand, and that was just a way to kind of cover it, but also for the the purchaser, if you will. Oh wow! Knew yep. which child it was, and um, yeah, I mean it's. It's horrible. Yeah. Because in a lot of these MKUltra situations, these kids who have grown up to be programmed for the system, Mm -hmm. their parents a lot of times are also programmed and in on it to a certain extent. So they're – yeah, I read that exact article. They would bring their kids – if the girl was in a yellow dress with like the fluffy white socks, they knew Mm -hmm. that they were – okay to be taken. And I mean, just to think that that goes on is so disheartening, you know, like, and we know it's still going on today because Mm -hmm. there's survivors coming out left and right now, which I, I, that the whole sex trafficking MK ultra stuff that those people have such a place in my heart because Mm, I can't imagine what they've gone through. Mm Mm-hmm. 
And for them to be able to come out and talk about it now is and educate us on Mm -hmm. what is going on. I mean, there's a reason we're all waking up to this stuff, you know, like I think that this is what we're supposed to be doing, making podcasts like this. Mm -hmm. You've got Bible studies that you offer, um, you know, because we have to bring it all back to God and, and Jesus. And what are we here on this earth for were to grow the kingdom for him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, amen. Amen. No, yeah. you're so right. I mean, and in studying this and researching this, I, I also am a, in a, I'm a counselor. And so I'm starting to realize how working with people, even people that haven't been through SRA, satanic ritual abuse, or like this level of mind control, like they do in the mm-hmm. system, all of us are fractured on some level. And when you can get a child to um, go through a traumatic event, and some of us have been through traumatic events, and part of us has developed a split, if you will, to mm-hmm. cope. And so all of us on some level have been exposed to some sort of mind control programming. And mm-hmm. others have been controlled to a, a bigger level and bigger fractures, um, you know, in our own lives, just as normal people. So mm-hmm. I think that's important to understand too, that this isn't just this kind of different sect of people that, you know, are experiencing these things. This is happening to everyday people. This is happening to people who have had abusive childhoods. Um, mm-hmm. And it's so such something that just kind of is multifaceted and just kind of runs throughout our society. And like you said, it's just hasn't been talked about. It hasn't mm-hmm. been talked about. So well, and even like Rick, he was in the Marine Corps. Mm. And so he, he has some stuff that, you know, he's had to deal with in the last, you know, probably five or six years that yeah. happened when he was 18, 19. Right. Like he's still, he's still a kid when all this stuff was going on and he was in the war and all of that. So it's like yep. those, those little traumas cause more problems later on in your life than you realize. So true. Yep. It's so true. And, but the good news is that Jesus can come in and heal that. And so mm-hmm. that's the hope in all this, because I know it gets dark, <laughs> it gets mm-hmm. heavy, it gets heavy. And, um, you know, even the Lord convicted me, I've been doing this online eyes on the right stuff for about six years now, six or seven years, I lose count, but the Lord was convicting me and refining me, even in the imagery that I would put out, because I realized, you know, we get so kind of, what's the word, just kind of numb to things. Yeah, d- you know, yeah, you're dulled to it, but you dulled, forget yes. that other people. This is new information to other people, so you're like, right. "Oh, that might have really shocked somebody." Mm-hmm. Sure, and so you're kind of, you know, wanting to expose this darkness and symbolism and all of that, but at the same time, do we are we glorifying the enemy mm-hmm. in sharing that? And so, mm-hmm. God really refined me in that, and I, I I try not to show imagery with with blood and and demonic stuff because mm-hmm. it's just you know, perpetuating this darkness. So Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, no, that's a good point to make. And I think another good point to make is that the, the, a lot of these survivors are Christians and it was them reaching out to Jesus that pulled them out of this dark um, torment, mental torment that they've been going through. And and not only has it pulled them out, but it's emboldened them yeah. to not be survivors anymore, but be warriors to get right. this message out and to and to help children and to not for a minute um, have anybody uh, go through this again. And, and when you hear that, that these survivors are so willing and so strong to to speak out about all the horrors and atrocities that happened to them, um, there is there is no doubt in my mind that they are being driven by the Holy spirit and all of the fear, um, of, you know, retribution or, or, you know, hurt any more hurt. It's, it's almost like, what else can you do to me at this point? You know, like what else can you do to my life, um, to, to make me be quiet because it's not going to happen anymore. Yeah. And I'm so encouraged because people are really waking up to the mind control like you were talking about the this undoing and that's what we're seeking to do on this podcast is to undo the mind control as yeah. best as we can and allow people to just see 
just 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 do some research we yeah. promise you'll mm-hmm. see this stuff well we've yeah. talked about multiple times those it's making those small compromises that you make over and over again you know so yeah. the stuff that you didn't think was a big deal when you were younger but now you see it for what it is you know the harry potter movies mm-hmm. and the dungeons and dragons and you know they're just games it's just this it's just you know mm-hmm. world of warcraft and it's just a computer game and you know you start to realize that you're desensitized yeah. a whole society with this stuff, mm-hmm. you know, and that's the purpose of it is to desensitize people because they're doing real spells in Dungeons and Dragons. They're, they're, right. It's not just a game. It's, it's, it, I guess it's as much of a game as a Ouija board is a game. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. But now even they have stuff like apps on your phone that you can go to and use it like a Ouija board from your phone. And it's like, oh, how far does this go? You know? I know. It's just, it's just playing around with this stuff that people think Mm -hmm. is perhaps too, because it's this unseen realm, right? Like you can't see the spiritual, but you see it's after effects. It's like the Mm -hmm. wind and the leaves. You don't see the wind, but you see the leaves moving. And, and so it's kind of like, well, it's not hurting anybody, you know? And so there's this kind of enticement to it, but that's what sin is. That's how the Mm -hmm. enemy gets us is it doesn't come Mm -hmm. packaged in ugly wrapping paper. It comes packaged looking good. And mm-hmm. I love to like, part of the reason why I like to do this is because I encourage people, um, you know, I think one of you guys said it, you know, don't be passive, be engaged. Mm-hmm. Maybe us talking about the little girls at Disneyland wearing the yellow dresses. If you see something, be more aware, you know, take, yes. pray about it. Lord, is this something that I need to like take closer look at? Like, you know, is this something that I need to maybe go tell somebody? I don't know. I don't know how it looks, but mm-hmm. I know that when we're engaged and we're we're vigilant and we're sober minded and we are, you know, focused on what is coming into our minds on a bombarding us on a daily basis, then we're more apt to just shoot things away and take them away, you know? Mm-hmm. And and not allow them space in our minds. And so I think that's part of this too. Yeah. yeah. Totally. Yeah. It really is. And it's hard to see these people that you've really put on a pedestal um, engaging in this stuff. And I mean, when you hear certain names and you're just like, wait, what? That guy or Mm -hmm. that woman? Not Tom Hanks. That was a big one for me. I was like, no, Toy Story. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But see how they packaged it? Yep. They're like, let's package him really good. He's the guy next door, you know? Yep. Everybody's dad, yeah, Mr. Yeah. Rogers, didn't he play him? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, come they on make him now. look so nice. And that goes back to your theory. You know, mm-hmm. it's like, do we trust these people and why do we trust them? Do we trust them because they were on a movie or a TV mm-hmm. show and they acted nice? Well, that's great. They're an actor. That's what they're trained to do. Like they, they can act like they're good people. And, yeah. but we, nobody knows what's going on behind, um, the closed doors, you know, and that's the stuff that we're just saying, look into this, look into Tom Hanks a little bit, look into the things that people are saying about him and, and many, many others, you know, look into the pizza symbology yeah, right. and, or why is, why is Miley Cyrus going from Disney doll to, to this crazy pizza laden weirdo on a stage, sticking out her tongue and wearing like pizza underwear and all this different stuff. Mm-hmm. If you know, then you know, and you'll pick up that imagery and you'll say, okay, I know exactly what you're trying to do right now. And I don't like it. Yeah, no, it's so true. So true. I'm and right you there. You've got a you. lot of stuff on your Instagram with like, you know, the covering one eye and, and the photos that these celebrities take, these photo shoots that they have, you know, like there's themes that run throughout all of this stuff. When you see somebody making the same symbols over and over again, yeah. you should pay attention. Mm-hmm. You know, you, there's a reason behind it. I agree. Which I didn't realize even, you know, not that long ago, but you start to see it now and you're like, oh, okay. Yeah. No. And I mean, kind of to your point um, with that and also kind of appearing one way like Tom Hanks and maybe being somebody behind closed doors, you know, again, there's this mind control MK ultra factor. And when Mm. you have some of these celebrities, and I know this is hard maybe for people to understand, but because of what happened under Project Paperclip, because of the ideas that the Nazi Germans under Hitler and Mengele, what they were doing with mind control, they literally took it from Germany and brought it over here to America and started mm-hmm. creating triple letter, or, you know, three letter agencies, 
create Hollywood was created as an agenda, as an experience, right. as a mind yep. control project and a magic spell for the masses. And so when you start to understand that, then you can start to see how some of these people like a Tom Hanks um, could potentially be one of the products of mind control. He, mm-hmm. and, and in that you've got two, you've got your front altar and your back altar. And so mm-hmm. this is very common. There's an SRA survivor named Kay Tolman um, who was programmed under Yosef Mangala and mm-hmm. um, she had a front altar and a back altar. It's called Janice programming. And yep. they created this. So by day, you're this perfect Christian or, you know, you're, you're Tom Hanks, you're this good old lucky Mm -hmm. guy. And then when that word is, is spoken or that trigger is given, they shift into that alter personality and they become somebody completely different. And this is why Mm -hmm. understanding that is important to add into the symbolism and the Hollywood stuff too, because it will give your audience a deeper understanding of the why Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I get that a lot. Like, why are they like, who cares? Like, why would they be doing that? And it's like, well, let's take it back, guys. Right. Let's start at the roots. Okay. And then we'll work our way up. Mm -hmm. When it's almost like they make it so complicated that people are like, never mind. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're, if you're connecting, you know, ancient Babylon with Disney, with (laughs) CERN, with all these other weird things going on, Mm -hmm. like I'm exhausted just thinking about it. I'm not going to do the research, you know, because, and that's what they do. It's all connected so intricately that people are like, forget it. I can't, it's too much. I I'm know. overwhelmed with just the Disney part, you know, <laughs> it's like, sure. I don't want to go any further. Yeah. Sure. And and that can happen. I mean, and we can take it to a, a level of where it's either too much. I don't want to mm-hmm. hear about this or take it to the other extreme of like, oh my gosh, everything, everybody's in it, everybody. And mm-hmm. so that's where this discernment comes in. You know, mm-hmm. let's not go to the extremes, but let's try to find this middle ground of discernment by the Holy Spirit. Let him guide you. Let him show mm-hmm. you what you need to see, you know? So, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, th- and I think for a lot of people, the, the first reaction that you want to have is to just be angry, you yeah. know, just be completely angry about all of this. And I just want to remind everybody that, that Jesus says, be angry, but don't sin, yeah. you know, don't, don't fall into the trappings of what they're doing is they're, they're luring you in to do something. And so, so be angry about what's happening, but don't sin. We have to live out our lives in the way that is is showing God in the way that he truly is and how he wants us to be. And so when we, um, you know, the Bible says that judge, judgment is mine, saith yeah. the Lord. Like it's, it's it, vengeance is his, it is his job to take care of all of this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so it may be hard to hear, um, but we're not asking you to go out and take care of anything. We're not yeah. asking you to, we're just asking you to read some things on the internet, look up some pictures, go to to uh, Amy's uh, profile on Instagram and look through these pictures because she's posting these pictures for you guys to see. Mm-hmm. And so we're, we're promoting her because she has already done a lot of this stuff. Like she said, mm-hmm. six years. Yeah. And so there's a reason why we've brought her on. There's a reason why she's doing what she's doing and God is connecting all of us so that we can make all of these connections and you can see what it is that the devil's doing. And you can realize that He's got it all under control. He's got it all in control. So I have a question. So what is, what do you say to people when they go, well, I like to watch movies. You know, I like Hollywood. I like, you know, what, what is your advice to people who still want, you know, because we still want to be entertained Mm -hmm. as humans, you know, we still want to listen to music and, you know, I guess what would be your advice to those people? Yeah, that I get that a lot. I can't do anything fun, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I think it starts with, you know, do you have a relationship with God and do you believe in Jesus Christ? Because if you do, then no matter the cost, you will give up what he tells you to give up. Um, mm-hmm. So it starts there, right? And yes. um, it's hard to tell somebody that doesn't believe in the Bible or Jesus because they're spiritually darkened at that point. Like they haven't seen yeah. and been revealed by the Holy Spirit. So So starting there, but then moving past that, say they are a Christian, you know, I would just really, you know, is this something that you think is going to edify you? Is this going Mm -hmm. to really bring you into an edification with Christ? Is this going to extend the kingdom? Is this going to, is this a good use of your time? Mm -hmm. Um, And, 
And if you decide, okay, yes, then Lord, give me discernment and wisdom as I watch this. Protect me. Mm-hmm. Let me see the mm-hmm. things I need to see. If there's, if I shouldn't be watching this stuff, like I love detective stuff. Like I love like Dateline and, <laughs> yep. you know, like got I- two of them right here. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> But I, I also know that that I can get into the into the realm of like excessiveness. And so that's where I'm like, Lord, if there's some of this stuff that I you don't want me watching, like is then then I'll I'll let it go. I'll let it go mm-hmm. for you. And I think it comes with that heart posture. Who do you want to serve? You wanna serve you or do you wanna serve him? And in that he'll give you the choices that he'll give you the answer that you need, you know. Mm-hmm. So it's Amen. tough though. Yeah, that's a great answer. And I, I we I don't think we could agree any more than yeah. we already yeah. do. Yeah. Um, I've given up a lot. I yeah. a lot. And it's worth it. The blood is worth it. Yeah. The blood of Christ. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Well, Amy, we don't want to take up too much of your time. We know you're busy and we we're just so thankful that you're able to come on. I mm-hmm. we would love to do another one of these with you if you wouldn't mind. Um sure. we can be in touch about that. But we uh we just wanted to talk a little bit about Disney and about symbolism. And I think we did a, a pretty bang up job of going all over the place, <laughs> but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately this is what you have to do because when you realize that the tentacles of the devil are in everything, mm-hmm. I mean, there is a reason why, um, there is so much turmoil in our world. There's a reason why all of this stuff is going on. It's because he has infiltrated every single system and societal norm and all of these different things throughout. And the kingdom of Jesus, the kingdom that he wants us to bring is only brought about through us Mm. believers doing what it is that we're supposed to do. So if we believers can all stand up and say, we don't want this anymore it will be fixed. God will hear us and it will be fixed. And a lot of times I think, you know what? Jesus isn't going to come back until we all just do what we're supposed to be doing. You know, like you you go to church and you do all these different things. And Jesus is like, nobody knows the time or day because you guys can't figure out when you're all going to get your (laughs) stuff together. Maybe if you could all just get along and start doing what I told you to do, then I'd come back. Uh, So anyway, just a funny aside, but um, we're just so grateful to have you. And uh, we're hoping that you enjoyed yourself and we're hoping that all of you out there in Mm -hmm. audience land had a great time uh, getting to know Amy a little bit. So, so where do people find you at? Like, you know, do you have a web? We obviously have talked about your Instagram page, but you, you do other things. I I, I actually have a J O B. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm very blessed. Thank you for asking. I do online biblical Christian counseling, um, Mm -hmm. via zoom or telephone and my websites, um, biblicalguidancecounseling.com. And I do workshops. Um, I have a few coming up for the summer. So check it out. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, and I just, I just wanted to add to, to kind of what you said, um, Rick is just, you know, when you understand that it's kind of a magic spell, right. When you start to understand it and when you start to step into being engaged in all of this, it's the spell is broken. And, mm-hmm. and this is, this is part of it, you know, and this is why I believe that Christ wants us to kind of wake up to all the tactics of the enemy. Um, he wants us to know. So yeah. there's hope in that. Yeah. yeah there really big time. is. Yeah. Awesome. Well, that's it for us. We are That's So Fringy Podcast. I'm Rick. I'm Kristen. And I'm Bethany. We've been here with Eyes on the Right. Amy, so great to have you. And we will see you guys on the next one. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.